Our next talk is called Applied Intelligence in SAP Digital Enterprise Platform. Um, the speaker is Heiko Steingerwald, who is Principal Director at Accenture Digital. Uh, in his talk, he'll explore challenges typical SAP clients are facing and what are the driving factors for their SAP digital transformation. Uh, how Accenture is using SAP analytics technology in a value added way. Uh, so, Mr. Steingerwald will demonstrate simple applications built on SAP digital enterprise platform. So, the floor is yours. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, and it's a pity to see that that topic still has not the interest it really should get. Um, and I hope with that uh, next uh, 35 minutes um, I, can, I can engage you a little more and also help to understand why this is a very important topic and why there is a lot of business in that topic most importantly. Yeah? I think that is very important. So very briefly to myself, um, already been introduced with, with the role, I have a, a couple of other ones. I'm 15 years uh, with the company, with Accenture, it's a global professional services firm. Uh, I think currently 450,000 people across the globe, uh, quite big, a very diverse business. I've always been in the SAP business intelligence area and in 2013 actually my career had uh, quite a big uh, change, a positive one, because at that time uh, the co-inventor of the SAP in-memory technology, which is now known as, as HANA, an in-memory database, decided to join our company, set up a global innovation center, and I was from day one on, um, together with him, scaling that topic across our company and to our clients. So that was um, quite, uh, quite interesting times, quite exciting, and that uh, led also to the fact that I'm now driving an initiative which is called Accenture Analytics on the HANA platform. And I will tell you a little bit why we are doing that, what's the benefit of it, and uh, what we're doing also together with SAP for our um, clients here, and why we're also looking for people who are interested in that topic, who understand how to bring data science and how to really bring it to action in our clients' enterprise platforms. So, let me start a uh, very simple look at that statement. So, how often do you use the Amazon product recommendation? Just think about it for two seconds. Or think about Netflix, yeah? Um, how often do you choose what is recommended by Netflix? And there are many, many more other um, examples like that. And now think of how often would you really use it when you had to open an extra browser, an extra application even, yeah, which has an ugly uh, user interface, how often would you use it? Nobody would use it. It must be simple, it must be embedded, it must come to the right, at the right point in time, otherwise nobody will use it. And that's exactly the point we are seeing. And now think about enterprise systems. I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with SAP or other enterprise systems who really run the backbone of our global companies across the world. So among the, the Fortune 2000, there's almost no company who has not an SAP component, be it a traditional enterprise resource planning system, be it something for customer engagement, be it something for back office processing, invoicing, even in, in telco or something where you have large um, numbers of invoices for, uh, for billing, uh, it, it's, it's a growing market. Yeah? So think about those companies uh, and how, how cool it would be if yeah, your enterprise system, the, the day in, day out uh, business user is working with, um, would have similar features. You could plan your work ahead, you get um, also some notifications if things change. Things always change, a plan is just a plan. Um, and how great would that be if that all could be embedded? You, you have not to use an extra platform, you have it inside, it is based on your most recent actual transactional data. And that is actually um, the, the idea SAP as a company, but also Accenture, with, uh, um, Accenture Analytics on the HANA platform is, is pushing and fostering to exactly make that happen. To integrate insights and analytics as deep as possible in the business processes and as such from a technology and software point of view also in the business software these companies are using. Yeah. So if we um, uh, look at that, why, why is that so important? There are studies out, and, and 
you from a data science community probably know better than I, who um, clearly show that companies who make analytics, and I include data science, I, I mean data science is, uh, is a part of analytics, a, a very important part, yeah, but all areas, including BI, including uh, let's say predictive analytics, including even machine learning and artificial intelligence technologies, if we consider all that analytics, if you embed that in your core, and with core I mean in the business processes, make it an imperative. We have heard from, from Sasa how, how difficult it is and how important it is um, to get uh, top level sponsorship for this topic. Yeah? If you're not managing this, um, it, you will hardly be successful. So if you manage to get that, to make that part of your DNA, so to say, um, then you can be more successful, you can outperform your competitors at the market. Yeah? Be it looking at the bottom line, at the, at the cost perspective, yeah, to be more efficient, be it on the top line by increasing the value you're delivering your, to your clients, be it new services which, which have not been possible otherwise. Yeah? So very important topic. And if you look at um, recent trends, um, what drive what we call um, companies nowadays to become more intelligent, to become the intelligent enterprise. We see a couple of trends and starting from the 12 o'clock position, for example, customer um, and, and, and client and business agility, meaning uh, really addressing a single person, a single request very individually. H how is that possible? It's only possible if you have a lot of analytics in it and, and a lot of other things. Yeah, I just marked in uh, that um, uh, orange uh, the, the analytics uh, related components. Yeah? Uh, very important. If you look at touchless, touchless and closed loop operations, big topic in the back office processing for many companies. Yeah? Um, what can you do to be more efficient in your invoice processing, in your accounts receivable, accounts payables, all that back office processes, not only in finance but, but others as well. What can you do to uh, ideally make it touchless? So touchless meaning no human touching it, just exceptional cases. Yeah? Huge efficiencies which allow also people to focus really on the value adding tasks. And of course we need a lot of analytics for it be it data integration, be it reporting, be it more advanced predictions, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, Real-time business insights and, and much more. Yeah? You see in all of those trends, um, you can't uh, get them to work if there is no analytics included. So how do you build that? H how do we bring it in? Yeah? First of all, um, you, sh you should have the end vision in mind, which is to create value. To create value, and how do you create value? By having the right data first. Yeah? You, you need to collect it properly, you need to store and process it, and you need the right data platform for it. And nowadays, it's, it's clear it's uh, now coming from a, let's say, enterprise world where it was long times, very structured data, um, siloed approaches, um, typical data warehouse type of approach, this no longer works. It works in uh, some aspects, but, but not in every. So we must combine it, we must get to new architectures. You need to establish that platform. Fine, data. But then what's the next step? Data is, it just costs you money, right? It, it, it has no value in itself. You need to do something with it, you need to process it. You need to get information out of it. Yeah. Um, so you need to have the right tooling uh, on top of it. Um, and there are many good, be it data science, be it business intelligence, be it analytics tools, also from SAP, which, are, which, are, which have a good um, integration. And you need to select the right ones to, to get those. And you need to have your people trained, obviously. And then the next step is, if you have those tools, you need to apply them to the data, obviously. Meaning, you need what we call, you need to build solutions. Uh, which can be a uh, predictive model, which can be a report, which can be a machine learning algorithm, whatever it helps, uh, whatever it is, helping you to isolate the signal from the noise, to get the insight. That is the piece out of your, um, of your sea of data you, you want to extract at the right point in time, in the right format. And then the trick is, when you have that insight, if you put it somewhere, nobody is using it or it's too late, then it's pointless. Yeah, you spend a lot of money but not getting anything out of it. So how to get, how to turn that insight into action? How to make it actionable? 
and, and the best way we, we are thinking to make it action, actionable for a business user is to embed it in their business process, in their, in their software even. Yeah. Um, there, there are other components to that. Um, it's, it's not only a technology topic, obviously. It, it has a lot to do with talent, a lot to do um, with processes and how you organize it. Um, th that's also um, a, a very important element to mention here. You need kind of almost an, uh, we call it analytics operating model, which, which combines those things. I'm focusing here a little bit uh, today on the, uh, on the architectural side of things. Yeah? But it, it's just to mention that here, it's also very, very important. And um, we, we've created an approach based on experience which, which addresses those things. And it has actually been created, um, let's say, outside the SAP domain. That is the interesting piece. Yeah? We, have, we have a large um, capability in our company uh, who deals with data science and, and analytics. And they have created a lot of very good things. What we have done with that Accenture Analytics on HANA platform concept is taking all the, these good things, these good learnings, and applying it to our SAP clients. Yeah, and uh, the typical questions they, they are having and asking is, hey, um, I need to create a digital roadmap. What the heck is that? I, I need to transform somehow. So how can you help me? And there are a lot of aspects to that. And as I said before, there are analytics aspects or analytics elements which, uh, which help and support that. Yeah. So we have a value-led approach. We have, um, for example, um, value cases or value driver trees which clearly indicate what is the value for certain measures and how you can support those measures with analytical components, with a predictive model, with a machine learning or with, uh, uh, with a predefined solution, for example. Um, other important element to mention here is um, how to architect that. Yeah? Um, I mean, the, um, the architectural options nowadays are almost endless, I would say. Yeah? Thinking on-premise cloud, pass, infra service, all the vendors, um, there is no right and wrong. It, it needs to deliver value for your specific cases and it needs to be flexible and adaptable. Yeah? Um, but this is very high level guiding principle. So how to do it exactly, we, 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 can, we can help there and have also good experience. Yeah? So we can help on that end. Uh, we also have those analytical use cases with, um, uh, which are proven. Yeah? I, I think that is the important thing. That's what we as a professional service firm can do. We, we interact with a lot of clients, obviously. We, we can learn and we can share, yeah? uh, anonymously, obviously. But if allowed from an IP perspective, etc., we can harvest those models, we can make them better, we can generalize them, and we can bring them to other clients, and we can show the value others have generated with it. And that is a big benefit if you want to create such a business case, for example. Um, we have uh, also assets and intellectual property, property on that end, so very, very active in this end. Um, and let me comment on the last um, Agile Analytics platform. And the top sentence is most important. For most of the, the SAP clients who are coming to us, they're saying, I invested millions and billions. And it, it's really uh, astonishing if you think about it. Um, big oil and gas company just this week, uh, sorry, last week, um, they are investing now in the next um, cycle of digital SAP products. And they are planning a multi-year journey with 7 billion. Yeah, 7 billion. I mean, you need to have a good case to do that. And uh, it is not easy to do or to create such a business case. And of course, you want to get most out of your investment. Yeah? I mean, it's, it's good money you're spending there. How do you get a better return on investment? And the good thing is with what, what SAP has created over the course of last five years um, with, its with, with its acquisitions and investments in analytics and, and data technologies, it is now quite good, I must say. Yeah? It, is, it is good to embed those things directly into their software and, and make it really part of the business processes. Yeah? It, it will not be able to cover each and every aspect of data science and, and predictive analytics and machine learning, obviously not, no? but that's also not their target. But their target is really to get all the stuff you need um, in your day in, day out business, in your business processes, to have that at a very good level and to automate as much as possible. Yeah. That's what they are after. And that's uh, where, where we can help by combining those things. So um, I talked already 
um, a little bit about um, Accenture Analytics, or now it's called Accenture Applied Intelligence. Just very brief, you can also check my LinkedIn profile. There are links to the company, and you find much more information. Um, we are a very diverse company, so this is uh, where the analytics pieces are happening, a lot of data engineering, obviously, as well. We have um, a lot of data scientists. They, they claim, and I don't know because I don't have references, they claim we have the largest in, in a company, and I think 2,200 plus is quite a good number. Yeah? Um, so if you're interested to join, yeah, also talk to me. Um, and uh, this is also highly appreciated by our clients because we can, we can bring these people in, um, in joint and combined teams with other functional experts, with experts for dedicated software or processes and can make very strong and powerful end-to-end -end teams. And that's very much appreciated by clients. Uh, we do a lot in, um, uh, in the uh, space of inventing things, uh, patenting things as well. Um, What's also interesting is our alliances with market leaders. Um, so we, we, we are technology agnostic. I'm, I mean, I obviously have a, an SAP head on a little bit, let's say, but we are not only partnering with SAP. Yeah? We have very good and strong partnerships and business as well uh, with IBM, with Oracle, Microsoft, Google, AWS, uh, SaaS as well, um, uh, Teradata, uh, for example, just to mention a couple, Tableau from the visualization front, uh, click, uh, all, all of those. So that is also, if it's a requirement, we can also bring that agnosticity um, to the table if required. And another important element I want to highlight here is um, the we believe very strong in innovation, yeah, in innovating in, in our company itself, but also bring those innovations to our clients. Um, we have a whole, what we call, um, innovation architecture and part of that are our innovation centers. We have those dedicated for analytics. There, there's one in Athens for customer analytics. We have one in Dublin for fraud analytics. There is one in, um, there are two actually in Barcelona, probably because it's a nice city, uh, for, for uh, supply chain analytics and um, finance analytics as well. Yeah? Um, all those have dedicated topics and um, then also innovate around those, those dedicated topics. Um, our different, I mentioned most of that already, um, combining teams in a value-led way, bringing the right expertise, um, investing in that uh, ecosystem of co-innovation, the innovation centers. Um, we also have uh, a lot of good and, and high-profile partnerships, which are not only on paper with academia, yeah, with the MIT, for example, uh, in the Artificial and machine, artificial intelligence and machine learning area with um, the um, DFKI, Deutsches uh, Forschungsinstitut für Künstliche Intelligenz, in Germany, yeah, uh, which is the top institute on on those topics. We are also uh, doing joint research and and uh, also even including client in those activities. Um, and maybe last but not least on that uh, slide, one thing we. Um, in almost every project um, encounter, and, and here when we are talking to clients, um, the, the problem to scale, analytics, data science. Yeah? I mean, it's relatively simple to do something in the garage, in the lab yeah? environment from an organizational, but also from a technology, data volume, complexity, et cetera, perspective. But then if you want to scale it, if you want to put it into production, if you want to roll it out to your 200,000 employees and a couple of million customers, that's a different story. You, you need different SLAs, you need different architecture, uh, you need probably a support organization whatsoever. You, you need to really make it run and fly. And um, that is where we also have um, a, a lot of expertise in, in industrializing things, in, um, in using our global network and in using our, our skills to really help industrializing these type of things. So um, looking at that, what have we done uh, in that aspect already? A large part of our business, for example, is taking whole operations and business processes from our clients, yeah? back office processes, for example, whole finance functions, whole uh, HR functions whatsoever. Yeah? And as part of that, we are typically um, obliged to drive efficiencies in these contracts. And uh, we thought about, okay, how can we drive efficiencies? 
Oh, for example, by applying analytics. So we developed over the course of time um, a couple, and uh, it's 200 plus at the moment, of what we call analytics applications, yeah, which are built on any technology. Uh, we just used what was around and what was applicable, and very often um, uses only data from an SAP system. So we pull it out, we do some R, and we put a tableau on top of it, and uh, we thought, hmm, that is not very efficient now with all that abilities you have in the new SAP um, context and platform. And what makes it particular um, interesting to take those elements and put it um, into the, the SAP technology platform of our clients is the fact that we are looking at it from a value-led perspective. That means we are not going there typically and say, hey, we have this and that cool piece of technology, let's look what we can do with it. We are, we are going to the functions, to the CFO or the finance function and say, hey, let's have a look on uh, how we can help you the pull, to pull the value levers, yeah? to get, uh, for example, uh, to optimize your working capital yeah? or to optimize your bottom line or whatever the finance function is responsible for. And we say then, hey, uh, in the procure to pay, for example, we have already a proven analytics app who can, which can support that activity. And by the way, at another client, we have shown 10 to 20 um, percent of um, of benefits of benefits improvement. In that uh, case, it's working capital uh, reduction, for example. Yeah? And that is a totally different discussion because if you have then the business, um, it is relatively easy to convince the IT IT because typically at the end the business pays, and if they they pay, they say, well, we do it. And for IT, it's even better if it's done in a platform they anyway have to operate and they, they will anyway have, and the data, very, data is anyway already on. Yeah? So it makes the story much simpler yeah? to the benefit for all, of all. Um, so we thought, great idea. Um, that was three years back in time. Um, then it took uh, a little while also in our company um, to convince leadership that it is really a great idea, uh, but then it took off in um, July, sorry, June uh, last year in Evian in our, on our Accenture sub-leadership council, both our CEOs um, uh, from SAP and Accenture signed uh, the contract and went public uh, to press that we are collaborating with SAP on those topics, bringing those solutions for SAP clients onto the SAP technology platform. Yeah. Um, it was a great, great achievement, and since then, we are working on um, exactly doing that. And um, just to give a little bit of, of technicalities, why do we believe uh, this is a good idea, despite all the, um, the potential we see for SAP clients or clients using SAP in using analytics yeah, and in the, the business we as a company and, and maybe also you as a data scientist can make when you understand this tooling and get your models into that or help companies to, to apply it and deploy, uh, uh, apply it and deploy it. Um, because, I mean, SAP started late. They were not great in the past and not even known for uh, data science or analytics tooling, however you want to call it. But it changed, it changed dramatically since last six, four, th four years, yeah? Also the acquisition of um, the former KXCN Infinite Insight, yeah, you might have heard that, very strong in customer analytics. Um, uh, and they, they, um, they put that together into a new product which is called SAP Predictive Analytics. It has a couple of components to support the full uh, life cycle yeah, from um, preparing the data sets from uh, creating the predictive models in an automated or in a, in a called off uh, advanced um, mode um, and manage the models, very, very important. Uh, if you want to do that at scale across an enterprise, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, plus, and that is the key thing where we um, co-develop with SAP, how to operationalize it, how to get it ideally with the click of a button into your business process, into your system. Um, and that is the so-called um, predictive analytics integrator. What is that? Um, it is a piece of technology, which is an architectural framework, if you like, which sits in the core of SAP applications. Core, I mean, technically speaking, for those of you uh, in the ABAP NetWeaver kernel. Yeah? 
it's in their flagship product. It's the S4 HANA product, yeah, which is the, uh, the new next generation ERP software of SAP. But it will co come and is partially already in all of the other products. Yeah, it's already in the Ariba product, which is their um, uh, buyer procurement um, uh, solution. Yeah. Um, it is uh, in partially already in the C4 HANA, which is all the customer-centric uh, elements of the solution. Um, what it allows to do is that, is that seamless integration. Yeah? And on the, on the right-hand side, you see some of the screenshots. Yeah, this here, for example, is a new user interface a business user would see. In that case, I know where it's from. Uh, you can't read it here, but it is um, a predictment, predict, prediction of shipment dates. Yeah? So um, the business user gets a prediction here, uh, what's the shipment date, and if it will be uh, late or in time or before time. Yeah? And that is a new quality of, um, of using this information. Yeah? Um, it is exactly the same application, the same thing the business user uses day in, day out. Now it has a new feature absolutely embedded. Yeah? And they can not only look at it like in the dashboard, but they can interact with it. Yeah? Um, though they can um, kick off a transaction and say, ah, um, this needs to be rescheduled and I need to call that customer or whatsoever the appropriate action is in that case. Um, Little more details on that. Um, again, you see on the left-hand side, this is uh, some screenshots how the models are created. Yeah, this is a workbench, so to say, where you pull things together, where you also do the, the data preparation and build the data pipelines, but where also where the model is built, um, and it is also validated, of course. So you get also performance characteristic, all the things you need. And if you're fine with the model, you really press a button and you deploy it using the Pi. Yeah? It, it, it is no code involved. It is directly consumed. Yeah? Um, you, of course, can also build your own models um, or extend existing ones. Yeah? If you think you, you can put in more data, uh, have a different type of model, um, so it delivers a better, a better prediction, yeah? for example. Um, and that is, that is quite, um, quite smart and, and interesting, obviously. What is even more interesting is for clients, uh, and I will tell you why it's interesting for you, uh, is there is already a lot of use cases coming out of the box. I mean, all this, yeah, contract consumption prediction, stock in transit and all this, this is coming out of the box. This is delivered by SAP already now to clients who buy that product. And there will be more coming. That means, for me, clients will use the out of the box stuff and will be happy. But then they will also look into it and say, hey, I can even tailor that more to my needs. I have another very good idea how to use that and apply it to my very specific use case where F SAP does not or does not want to deliver that out of the box. And that is where it comes into play that we need data scientists who can build those models, who can, who can really do all the analytics life cycle and get it run on that platform because that is what a lot of clients will have in the future and they have it already now and start using it and and that is really the big uh, potential we are seeing yeah we are seeing for for data scientists but we are we are seeing also um, uh, clients looking into that because they understood there is value uh, they can they can unlock they can they can get out of that um and it's not only SAP, obviously, thinking um, about that, um, how to use that. Um, it's also us. I showed that library of 200 plus applications we have on other technologies. We are bringing those now to SAP technologies. And one very obvious uh, is the so-called payables optimi optimizer. Yeah? Just using data out of an SAP system. And we, we started that as a prototype to implement that and we called it replatform that. And I just want to roll a quick video at three minutes and uh, giving a little bit on what that payables optimizer is doing. In a world where efficiency is critical to staying competitive, can accounts payable become more efficient and effective? Armed with new insights and intelligence, accounts payable can become a strategic capability that helps improve working capital management and drives business value through optimized discount capture and payment timing. 
With Accenture's Payables Optimizer, the intelligent enterprise can now act in real time on current data to increase working capital and reduce cost. When an account's payable decision needs to be made, the application applies intelligence and proven predictive models to the transactional workflow in SAP S4 HANA to get the best business results every time. The Payables Optimizer uses predictive analytics to look across vendors, avoid early payments and identify where discounts can be best captured to address strategic goals. The Accounts Payable team no longer needs to access multiple systems, juggle spreadsheets or work with outdated information. Now they're empowered to meet the challenge of changing business environments through real-time data and a single powerful dashboard. CFOs can instantly assess the situation and define the strategy, while procurement managers have a view that lets them implement the new approach. From analysing the patterns of early payment, for better understanding of P&L impact, to leveraging the early payment simulator to understand the working capital improvement opportunity by reducing the percentage of early payments. Procurement managers can develop a plan to execute the CFO strategy and accounts payable analysts can easily execute this plan by reviewing open invoices with payment recommendations thanks to the seamless and codeless integration with your SAP system through SAP's predictive analytics integrator software. Payables Optimizer links reports, strategy and account reconciliation and provides insight-driven actions to increase working capital, reduce early payments, increase discount capture rate and increase purchase order compliance. And through machine learning and model management based on achieved results, predictions improve over time. Payables Optimizer helped a company in the resources industry to gain $42 million in working capital benefits through new vendor, payment run and process analytics. And it helped a leading software company to save $6 million in operational costs. Accelerate your enterprise transformation with intelligent finance. To find out more and see how Accenture can help you innovate with speed and agility, visit our website. my presentation. Uh, thanks for your attention. I'm happy to take questions and I'm around till um, tomorrow afternoon so also happy to connect and network with you on any type of question you have. Uh -huh.